So today we're going to do something that a woman I recently met who spent years in prostitution recommended that anyone should do who wants to form an opinion on prostitution. And that is look at and then compare and contrast what women post on forums where they're exchanging about their experience of prostitution. Compare and contrast that to what Johns talk about on their forums. There's no perfectly comparable source for this, obviously, because it's not like we have two sides of the same coin. These are completely different groups of people, Johns and women in the trade, and obviously they have different goals. She wants to make money, she wants to sustain herself, her family, etc., pay her bills, and he wants to get his rocks off. But generally speaking, if we were comparing forums for, let's say, people getting other types of services like massages or haircuts, yes, you would assume there to be difference, but the contrast when it comes to prostitution is extreme in how the service is experienced. Again, the question we need to ask ourselves in regards to prostitution is, is this what we want for worldwide millions of women? Or do we want to work so that women don't have to do this? How we're going to get there, we can discuss that another day. But the question, obviously, that we need to have first before we look for solutions is, what is happening here? And can this be an ethical industry or not? So for the forum where women exchange what it's like for them, I've chosen the subreddit sex workers. Now the subreddit does have quite a lot of members and I'm not going to pretend otherwise. I assume the majority of women on there support full decriminalization. But of course, all the women who aren't on there are the ones who don't speak English, are the ones who are too busy to communicate on forums or who are in places without internet access, etc. And of course, the women who think differently. But I'm specifically going to use a source that is uh, gonna, not going to be biased towards my position. So I'm just going to go through like maybe the first 10 posts on this forum. So one of the first photos is about a man asking, trying to scam a woman into sending him naked pictures. And of course, she wants to be paid first. And he's like, no, no, you can trust me. It's fine. I'll definitely pay you after. I mean, I've said this in another video. Other types of services, it's quite common for the person to pay after they see the results of the service or the product or whatever. Not in all jobs, but in many. Most of the time, there's mutual trust between the customer and the person selling. The industry is based in trust. Like, you need to trust that that person will actually pay you upon completion. That's how it works. But in prostitution, there's a serious mistrust between the woman and the man. For good reason. Like, she is worried he's going to steal her money, going to rob her or attack her at some point. John's complain all the time that women in the trade are scammers uh, when they don't do exactly what they want. Like, they don't exactly comply with every one of his demands. can get aggressive. They'll say so themselves, like, uh, they'll say, oh, I could have really, like, burned down her place for saying that. Okay, and then there's a whole thread about how uh, Johns constantly want to not use a condom and want a blowjob without a condom. This woman is saying, like, I keep telling them I don't want to do this. She says what woman in her right mind goes uncovered. Women who don't use condoms are the ones who are struggling to stay afloat financially and have to do this. I mean, that's, that's, that's why they do it. Because they have to. And she, this this woman is saying, if you do go uncovered, not use a condom, please stop. Men are trying to force us all to follow suit. Bless your heart and please be careful. Yeah, I mean, that's the real, that's a serious problem, right? If one woman is doing it without the condom, that puts pressure on the other women competing with her to also not use a condom. Right? So this is the problem. Like, if you're in prostitution, what other women do or other women are doing affects you, right? Which is why, I mean, solidarity is a good thing between women. Like, yes, if all women refused to do it, that would be great. I would love if that was possible. But there's always someone who's financially more desperate than you are. That exists everywhere, unfortunately. And really, I've wrecked my brain on how we could possibly reform this so that at the very least, women can enforce condom use. I don't see how, right? And the, the women here are all discussing this, like, how can we enforce this? Unfortunately, uh, we can't. Because Johns have the economic power here. And no one should have the economic power over another person to risk their sexual health. What I don't agree with, what some abolitionists say, is that women in prostitution who speak of sex work don't care about women who are trafficked or women who are under pimp control. Like, that's not true. A lot of them care, and I can see on this thread, like, they're talking about it, and they're sharing this article about the Syrian women and girls sold into sexual slavery in Lebanon. Like, I think generally they understand that this industry has proximity to them, and 
I know stories like traffic women have said, like women in the industry tried to take care of me, tried to help me. Not every woman will do this, can do this. I don't trust brothel owners, johns or pimps to report trafficking. And it's them I hold accountable for it happening. It's really, it's not the fault of women in the trade who are trying to establish this as a job in the hopes that it'll make safer. It's not their fault that sex trafficking exists. And I like to retire the notion that they don't care and they don't see it. I think that many of them have the hope that if you decriminalize and that this will combat trafficking. Unfortunately, all the evidence I've seen says this doesn't happen. But I believe that women who fight for this legislation genuinely believe that it will. So that they're doing women who are in abject slavery a favor. I believe them when they say that. I don't think that's a marketing trick. Okay, so then they're talking about how Johns will like say, I'm going to be there at this time, I'm going to pay this much, and then they just don't show. And that's a real problem for her. Uh, then she doesn't get anything. She could have used that time, you know, making money when she wasn't. And that's a real problem because a lot of women are really living paycheck to paycheck. Like prostitution doesn't pay that well for most women. Also, I want to note on this thread um, that sharing a video about Ting Shi. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. This is about this awesome Chinese pirate queen who was also a woman in prostitution at various parts of her life. Yeah, no shit. Women who are in prostitution are capable of doing all kinds of things, including being pirate queens, and that is awesome, and I think that should be celebrated. I just personally think we can celebrate these women without celebrating the institution of prostitution, because literally, like, before condoms came along, women just died young from STDs. Like, that's not an exaggeration. They just, they just died. Like, prostitution was an early death sentence. So... I think we can look back at these amazing historical women or just women who really defied the odds without romanticizing the institution. Oh, and then they're discussing this case where a woman in a strip club fell two stories of the pole in a Dallas strip club. She fractured her jaw and the club isn't helping with her bills. Anyone want to start a little collection for her? No matter the legislation, like there should be forums where like women can talk to each other, can support each other. The Abolitionist uh, Survivor Network in Germany, so there's an organization here of women who are in prostitution or used to be in prostitution who support uh, abolishing the industry. They also do this, like they collect funds to help each other through uh, rough times. I think it's awesome that women are doing this, women who have all kinds of political opinions, like this is female solidarity and we should be doing this. I, I think it's important for most of society to know that prostitution doesn't pay well. To really understand, like, when women are asking for money, they're not greedy. They're, like, literally trying to pay their bills. That's why I think it's important to, like, not do this. And I'm not accusing women of this threat doing this. Like, it's just, like, the media in Germany, certainly. It's, like, here are the traffic women and here are the women making hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of euros every night. Like, no, most women make very little. Like, they can barely pay their bills. So when they're asking for money, like, believe them that they actually need this. So there's a woman saying, um, who's a dominatrix, is saying that for most of the time, like, she's been doing okay, like, the men respected um, the boundaries she set up, but then um, she met a man who showed red flags, but she kept, like, seeing him because he was paying uh, well. She says, his behavior grew obsessive and erratic to finally frighten me to the point where I said I will no longer be his provider. I understand I should cut him off as soon as I saw the red flags. He still continues to contact me and I'm worried he'll try to show up to my in-call, which is also my residence. I'm not worried for my safety. I just don't want drama. I guess my question is, how do you handle obsessive clients? So, I mean, this is another thing that I want to point out. I would really like it if abolitionists could stop talking about dominatrixes. Like, they don't have men who are like this, who are, like, entitled and scary or possibly violent. Women in, who do domination, they are also amongst the missing and murdered from within the sex trade. Just because she's the one with the whip and he's the one being whipped doesn't mean that when he gets mad, he's not going to hurt her. And then they're sharing a meme that was upvoted hundreds of times. This meme says, when he's 70, obese, and has heart problems, but insists on being on top, as like, this is no place to die. I mean, the first time I saw this, I thought this was about her lying below, trying not to suffocate. But yeah, uh, he, that might actually kill him. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's something I've thought about a while. Like, what's with these Johns, like, not using condoms, like, doing things that can physically harm themselves? asking women who are dominatrixes do things to them that cause substantial injury like these things do happen it's like a lot of these men are dangerous because they're not just careless towards others they're also careless towards themselves i mean i don't know how how women can handle it that this john's posting on this forum which is kind of about and for women in the trade because there's this dude talking about going to a strip club saying that he went there with a woman in prostitution and they critiqued the talent and fuckability of each girl Ew.
That's misogyny. Let me check the comments if he's being told off, because what an asshole. Yeah, yeah, they're telling him off. The Johns are like, awesome, detailed report on this club, and the women are like saying, you dick. Critiquing the fuckability of each girl, I mean, that's what we're going to turn to now. I mean, this is just a little bit from the forum where women talk to each other about what they experience. I don't spend a lot of time on these forums because, like, I already know. Like, I've talked to women face-to-face -face who, like, tell me this is the everyday shit that you go through. Some of it is, I mean, best case scenario is, is boring. Worst case scenario, um, you're scared you're going to die. And this happens to women who call themselves prostitutes, hookers, sex workers, doesn't matter, the reality is the same. But it's essentially what you'll find most of the time is like, I mean, how how can I handle this? Like, how can I not get blackmailed? How can I not get revenge porn? How can I not get attacked? How can I not get stalked? How can I bear this gross old man? And you see, like, when women say something positive, it's always about he paid a lot of money so that she doesn't have to worry about her bills for a while or she can afford something nice for herself or her kids. I mean, you will find occasionally report women says, oh, his company was really nice. But I mean, there's Johns on there. Obviously, it's an environment where Johns feel comfortable. So like having this like real critique, like like a lot of women who exit prostitution, that's when they find themselves at the point where like, yes, I can do this. I can really honestly say how I feel about these men because I no longer have to worry about their opinion. Like but that's when they let it all out. And you can see here that women are keeping it contained because it's a forum that feel comfortable using. So for the comparison, I have chosen a John Forum. Uh, this is from Germany and I'm going to be translating. I have specifically not chosen the worst kind of John Forum, which is where it's a website where they're legally, where they're really doing like all kinds of stuff that's recently become illegal, that two years ago was made illegal, like condomless that became illegal. I'm set using one that has been claimed to be the most friendly towards women. We'll see about that. I've not read these before. I'm just, I'm literally just going to read them to you as they come. Like, I'm not making this up. And I'm just going to read you the first entries for, like, these various German states. Okay. So, as this guy saying? Yesterday, I went to see Janine. There's a few reviews about her here. But I wanted to see for myself. Stood in front of her door. The madam showed me into the room. I was very curious to see what she looked like. Then I heard steps and the door opened. Janine came in. Smiling, dressed in a very tight little dress with red high heels. Wow, I almost couldn't breathe. What a pretty woman. Such a hot figure. Even better with the high heels. Her breasts are B to C cups, uh, natural. I thought, well, I've really done well for myself today. Soft skin, still all tight and in place. Oh, she doesn't speak German, so if we speak English. Asking me how long I want to stay, I say one hour. She speaks good English. Uh, clean myself, take off a dress. Um, uh, let me just summarize what he's saying. So he's saying he really liked it, and uh, she got him really hot, and um, he feel felt like uh, she liked it too. And then finally says, um, says she had an orgasm. Oh yeah, and he called her uh, a chocolate, chocopalina chocolate. Um, I assume that means she's black, because uh, they call women her black chocolate. Another report is this guy complaining that um. Woman seems quite normal on the phone, but then when you wake, want to make an appointment, she's constantly cancelling on you, trying to demonstrate her power. A woman cancelling on you is not demonstrating her power, she's demonstrating her boundaries. She might want to annoy you, but that's not power. That's like just, like basically, just the very basics of her protecting her boundaries. He says, oh, she looks down on men. A lot of women in the trade look down on men, and they have good reason to, okay? And then he's complaining that she wants too much money. She wants 80 euros for 20 minutes. That is a very high price for 20 minutes considering what's normal on the market. But that's her right to ask as much as she wants. He says, this woman is lying every time she opens her mouth. That's why I left her standing. She insulted me as I left. What a ripoff. She doesn't want to give any service. She just wants our money. Thank God there's lots of honest girls who work hard and uh, give us good service. Um, she brings shame on the whole house. Uh, keep her paws off this woman. Women who show boundaries. John Stone like that. Okay, they're complaining that what the woman wrote in her ad is not her real body size, that she weighs a little more than she said, and also that she's older than she said. And then he says, wow, she gave a really good blowjob. I just wish she wouldn't talk so much. She kept taking breaks and telling me about her everyday life. Um, that almost made me crazy. She wasn't rude or hectic, but she just talked too much. 
Um, still, I managed to um, fill my condom and then happily went my way. She's clean and uh, fairly nice. Just was kind of annoyed at her talking so much. Wouldn't do this again. This guy says, she's a nice, sympathetic, pretty lady. We had girlfriend sex. Girlfriend sex is when she pretends that they've actually known each other for some time and they have some kind of intimate connection, even though they don't. Um, she's alive. She's got humor. She's smart. Normal service. Quite safe. Felt very comfortable. She just doesn't like French kissing, but that's okay. If you treat her well, you'll have fun. And uh, she's not faking with her pictures. And, um, she really looks like that. Yeah, he's another guy saying that... Um, she also enjoyed it, and uh, she was very passionate, and she was moaning the whole time. When I'm reading stuff like this, I'm always hoping that what he's reporting is true, really. Like, I hope she likes it. I really do. It's just that any woman you talk to, I mean, what's the first thing you learn? You don't even have to look into prostitution to learn this, that women fake orgasms and moan like there's no tomorrow so that things will be over soon. So when he's saying that she enjoyed it, there's this question mark, did she really? And when he sees it and says she doesn't, I'm fairly certain that's actually what's going on. Because why would he lie about that? Wow, okay, so this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. In the next one, he's saying, this woman really gave me the feeling that she was horny for me, that she really liked it, that she wanted to be kissed and stroked everywhere, that she liked it. What a perfect illusion. I wonder how she does it. What a perfect illusion. I wonder how she does it. That's why I was just telling you, these guys know that it's an act and they can't tell the difference. And obviously, as a third person, just reading this text from his perspective, I can't tell. Really, seriously, every time I'm hoping she's actually liking it because that means she's not, she's not finding this gross, right? Or traumatizing at worst. But as they themselves say, what a perfect illusion. And this, like, this formulation illusion, you'll see this quite a bit. The last report, because I'm really done reading this because it's really explicit. This is a negative review. This is a woman from Hungary. He says, perfect body, bad service. She doesn't want to do French kissing. I wasn't allowed to kiss her at all. That's not uncommon. Not allowed to kiss her in mouth or face. She's very professional. That means she's very distanced. Barely allowed to touch her breasts, her nipples, not at all. And then she keeps turning away from me so that I can't really touch her. Uh, very lifeless and mechanical. I took her from behind. Wonderful view. I mean, who wouldn't stop if the woman kept moving away from him? What asshole doesn't stop and ask her, are you okay? I feel like you don't want this. I feel like I should go. Any person with basic empathy, that's what he would do. No, no, no. He keeps going. And then she kept pushing, pulling her legs together, pushing down her body so he couldn't touch her breasts. When he couldn't come in this way, this asshole, she tried to do a hand job, but it was too cold. Not soft enough, not, not gentle enough, so he couldn't come. So he's very unsatisfied, and he cannot recommend going there again. Again, putting all of this into perspective, this is a negative review. This has consequences for her. There's literally her face on there, her whole naked body. I mean, prostitution as their pornography, okay? Her naked image is on the internet forever. She might not want that in the future. She can never take it back, unfortunately. This is some woman from Hungary trying to feed her family, okay? What can we say looking back at all of this? A good review gets her more jobs. That's what she needs to keep paying her bills. A bad review gives her less, right? I can list all these reasons why you cannot trust a positive review, as in the genuity of her enjoyment, because she has a financial incentive to make him feel like she did. And these men say so themselves, right? Um, and then when she gets a negative one, that means less men are going to show up and she's going to might have to change town, go somewhere else. But it's impossible to keep acting every single day. That's just too tiring. So women show that they don't want to be having the sexual contact uh, frequently. And the Johns just keep going anyway. They're fucking used to it. But to bring it all together, you have the comparison. You have where women are discussing the reality of what's going on. This is not a source where prostitution survivors who are out of the trade are talking about the experiences. This is women still in. And they're saying, like, how can I handle this? How can I handle this dangerous or difficult situation? How can I handle this? And the Johns are saying, where can I get my maximum enjoyment and my maximum illusion? I did not pick these reports. I could have read to you what prostitution survivors say and what the worst kinds of Johns say, the ones who are, like, very explicitly saying, like, I don't give a damn if she's trafficked. I don't give a shit if she's got a pimp. I don't give a shit if she's in pain. I didn't even show you that because I don't think that's necessary. Like, I'm hoping that it's enough 
to look at just this. To understand that what's going on is not okay. It's not okay to institutionalize that women would have to be penetrated by men they don't want to be penetrated by to pay their bills. Like, we need to come up with alternatives.